I thought it was a, an amazing victory, so I, I couldn't have been more happy for him. Novak's, for me, the greatest athlete. This man, Novak Djokovic, is the greatest of them all. No other player in tennis history has drawn more interesting opinions than Novak Djokovic. From his biggest rivals to coaches, tennis legends, and current players, here's what has changed about their opinions in the last couple of months. Honestly, I expected a little bit better from some of them, but here we go. In the last couple of months, there's been this funny narrative circulating around that Novak Djokovic is someone who only cares about the records. And this is all thanks to one man. Djokovic's biggest rival, Rafael Nadal, didn't have the classiest of words for the Joker a couple of months ago. He basically said that Nole would have been frustrated without the Grand Slam record. Interestingly, the reporter hadn't even asked a question about Novak at the time, yet Rafa still found a way to bring him into the discussion. For example, I think that Novak in that sense lived in a way more intense than I have lived. That's not for him. I think that it's a problem. Una, un, una frustración, a lo mejor hubiera sido una frustración más grande no, no conseguirlo. Of course, this triggered the Novak fans, and we saw a little bit of back and forth for a while. Nole responded by saying that everyone was entitled to their own opinions, and that Rafa is a great champion whom he respects and appreciates as his biggest rival, and as a player who contributed to shaping his game. He then said that he had no intention of speaking in a negative light about him or Roger Federer, because his respect towards them superseded some negative opinions he might have had. He disagreed with Rafa's opinion and didn't comment any further. Personally, I thought Novak's response was classy, but not too long after, Rafa was back at it again and had this to say. In the end, we all know that Djokovic is what he is and that he's achieved something historic, something that had never been achieved before, and we can only congratulate him. The truth is that I imagine Djokovic winning a Grand Slam this season, but I did not imagine him winning three because I think there's another young generation that's very powerful. Alcaraz had a great opportunity at Roland Garros to prevent Djokovic from winning, but what happened physically happened to him, although after he made up for it and achieved something historic at Wimbledon. Novak would come back with a response after winning the ATP Finals in Turin, saying that he was open about breaking records and didn't pretend like some people. A sly dig at Nadal? Maybe, possibly, but I kind of find it interesting that Nadal is the one to point the finger at Djokovic being obsessed with records, when the Serbian was the one who gave up the opportunity to win major titles in 2022 due to principles surrounding his vaccination. Meanwhile, Rafa almost jeopardized his career by playing with nerve damage, a numb foot, and taking countless injections en route to his 2022 Roland Garros title. Yet, Nadal is the one who says he doesn't care about the records. Let's also remember that back in 2021 and a couple of other times, Nadal called Novak obsessed, saying that while he played for the satisfaction of competing in itself and had a healthy ambition, Djokovic was obsessed with chasing records. Also, what's with the backhanded compliment in comparison here? Ha tenido ha llevado la ambición al al máximo. Yo creo que he sido una persona ambiciosa, pero una una ambición sana que que me ha permitido también eh, ver las cosas con Con, con perspectiva, ¿sabes? O no, 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 no estar frustrado, no cabrearme más de la cuenta en la pista cuando las cosas no iban bien. No, I'm not going to go as far as saying that Novak is living rent free at Rafa's head, but sometimes you do have to wonder if Nadal has a subtle beef with Djokovic. Another way to look at it would be to say that this is all some misinterpretation. Do you guys think that Nadal's quotes were taken out of context and that maybe, just maybe, the media blew it out of proportion a little bit? Because it was definitely getting a little weird at some point. Anyway, Novak's next rival had some nicer things to say about the Serb. Following Novak's fourth U.S. Open title win, Federer had this to say about him in an interview. I thought what Novak did is incredible. You know, years, I mean, I remember when I came on tour and Pete uh, Sampras reached 14, we thought that, okay, that one was going to stay forever. Then I went to 15, I eventually, I think, ended up at 17, and then... We pushed each other to 20. I don't remember who was first. Uh, and then um, Rafa pushed it to 22, I believe. And then now Novak, he looks like he's going to keep on doing that for a long time still to come, which is great. And I wish him all the best. Um, I think also the way he's doing it, it's still, he's not the youngest anymore. We forget he looks young and he does it like in a young, young way, but it's not easy. And uh, I, I thought it was a, an amazing victory. So I, I couldn't have been more happy for him. Honestly, at this point, I can say that Federer has a great deal of respect for Nole. Since 2011, if I remember correctly, I haven't seen Roger actually disrespect the Serb. 
Of course, you're not going to expect him to say that Novak is the greatest of all time, but let's be real here, it seems like these two have a pretty good cordial relationship at least. Talking about relationships, this next player wasn't exactly the best of friends with Djokovic, but that all changed a long time ago. Let's hear what he has to say. Novak Djokovic, undisputed GOAT in my opinion. What a player. To Mick Kyrgios, Novak Djokovic is the greatest of all time, no question about it. Seeing the two become friends last year was really quite refreshing. Despite taking the first set against Djokovic at the 2022 Wimbledon final, Kyrgios had a rethink and felt he really stood no chance against Djokovic. Kyrgios missed the entire 2023 due to injury and has found some solace in running commentaries and granting more interviews. We can best summarize what Kyrgios thinks of Djokovic in three seconds. Novak is obviously superhuman, he's an alien. But someone else thinks equally highly of the Joker. Andy Roddick pretty much summed up everything about the GOAT debate by saying this. It's weird, there's two GOAT arguments, right? There's one that's based on stats and there's one that's based on feelings. With Novak, if you just put his numbers side by side, slam totals, head-to-head -head record against most people on earth, he has a positive head-to-head -head record against his two biggest rivals, has won the most Masters 1000s, uh, he's adding weeks to the, the, the all-time number one list, it's actually hard to make a statistical argument against Novak having the best resume ever at this point. And then the, the conversation eventually when someone's countering that is comes into like stylistically and I like this person and this person carries themselves a certain way, but I kind of tend to lean into the numbers a little bit more. Hardly any other tennis legend has praised Novak as highly as the former American world number one. Though the two had a different relationship while they were playing going into the 2010s, a lot has changed now thanks to Nole's monumental success on court. But just like a similar video we made a few months back where some legends like Stefan Edberg and Mats Wielander were a little bit more tactical with their opinions on Novak, this next tennis legend has a similar opinion. Some of you might not know him, but Adriano Panatta is a former Italian tennis player who won the French Open in 1976. He remains the only Italian man in the Open era to win a Grand Slam singles title. He even defeated Bjorn Borg at Roland Garros twice. Well, he believes that if his compatriot Yannick Sinner gets to beat Djokovic two or three times in 2024, he could push Djokovic into retirement. According to Panata, it would be just a case of history repeating itself where Borg quit upon the arrival of McEnroe and McEnroe quit upon the arrival of Boris Becker. Personally, I think it's a little over the top. Adriano Panata is clearly rooting for his fellow Italian and he's a very big fan of Sinner. Though, I personally would need more convincing to believe that beating Nole more than once is enough to push him into retirement. Djokovic is literally the biggest competitor out there, and I think that the next gen is going to have to do a little bit more than beating him a few times to actually get rid of him. I don't see that happening in 2024, but what are your thoughts on Panata's opinion? Let's switch gears a little bit and dissect what I consider a very interesting opinion from this next tennis legend. Rick Mocci is an American tennis coach and former player who has trained five number one ranked players. Andy Roddick, Jennifer Capriati, Maria Sharapova, Serena Williams, and Venus Williams. Rick Mocci has already admitted that he thinks Djokovic is the greatest player of all time because of the Serbians' love for competition. Rick says that Djokovic checks more boxes than anybody and has shown his consistency mentally. But Rick also believes that Djokovic still has something to prove. According to him, Djokovic thinks differently, eats differently, and trains differently, but could still prove that he could get even better in 2024. What are your thoughts on that? Up next we have... The American former world number one and 18-time major singles title winner is widely regarded as one of the very best in women's tennis. Now a TV commentator, Everett has always had a deep respect for Djokovic. We saw that after his French Open title win earlier this year. Everett had even more nice words for Djokovic during his impressive run at the US Open as well. In her words, I have the impression that when you watch Djokovic play, you're watching the maestro. There's no one like him. Everett also responded positively to a tweet that said the 36-year-old will achieve 500 weeks as the world number one. And not too long ago, she also had some assuring words for Djokovic, letting him know that there's a good chance he'll be friends with Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal after retirement. This came after Novak said that he hadn't developed close friendships with the duo, since he considered them rivals and only saw a thin line between friendship and rivalry. Personally, I'd love to see that happen in the future. But let me ask you, do you see Novak having a genuine friendship with Rafa or Roger eventually? 
A couple of days ago, Serena Williams' former coach, Patrick Mortoglu, talked about Novak's 2023 season, saying that it was literally the best version of Novak and that he has ended the GOAT debate. Here's what he said. I think the 2023 season of Novak is one of the best of his career. As good as the best ones he had in the past, 2015, for example, which is crazy when you think about it because there is almost 10 years between those two seasons and he's still at the top of his game uh, at 36 years old. It's something unheard of. I've never seen in the history of tennis someone who's at the top of the game at 36 as much as he was at 26, 28. It's a whole career of being at the top. He had one or two difficult years, but uh, most of his career has been at the top of the game. Even though he played in the same era as uh, Roger and Rafa, which says even more about how an incredible dominant player he is. And I think the famous debate about uh, who's the GOAT, I guess it's completely dead now after this um, incredible year, three more Grand Slams plus one final. Uh, he has the record almost everywhere of all. Number of Masters 1000, number of weeks number one, number of Grand Slams, and he's still playing and he's still at the top. It's interesting to think, um, is the Novak of 2023 a better player than the Novak of 2015? And I think the Novak of today is better. His game evolved, his confidence evolved. If he played so many more matches, he has even more height when looking at his game, looking at his opponent, and he didn't drop physically. If he would have dropped physically, then probably the Novak of 2015 would have been a better player than the Novak of 2023, but his fitness level, I think is the same. He's as fast, he's uh, as flexible, he's as balanced when he hits his shots, he's as resistant, so he's a better player today. Yes. In the same vein, American former world number one Jimmy Connors, who holds the all-time men's record for ATP singles titles at 109, had some comments to share on his Advantage Connors podcast. Connors beckoned everyone to give Djokovic the respect that he deserves, considering just how much he's put in to become the best and also the records that he has broken. Couldn't agree with you more, Jimmy. Still sticking with the Advantage Connors podcast, Here's what another tennis legend had to say about Novak. Australian former tennis player and Yannick Sinner's current coach Darren Cahill heaped praise on the Serbian while appearing on the Advantage Connors podcast with Jimmy Connors and his son Brett. Cahill, who previously coached Andre Agassi and Simona Halep, stated that Djokovic was the greatest player he has ever seen. He then went further to say that while everyone had favorites, what Djokovic did was remarkable and that there was more greatness to come from the Serb. In Cahill's words, to win 24 Grand Slams, I mean the guy is the greatest I have ever seen. I don't think there's any question about this anymore. We could all have our favorites, Roger, Rafa, Rod Laver for me, who won two calendar Grand Slams, the last one in 1969, which was a remarkable effort. But to do what Novak has done and come from way behind when Rafa and Roger had a big Grand Slam total and actually pass them on the Grand Slam total, remarkable performance. And there's more to come from him too, he added. But Cahill isn't the only coach to attest to Nole's greatness. Even the coach of his biggest rival from the next gen is at a loss for words when it comes to describing Nole's greatness. Former world number one Juan Carlos Ferrero is the coach of Carlos Alcaraz, and he knows a thing or two about Novak. Ferrero recently revealed his utmost admiration for Djokovic, saying that he literally drools in awe when watching the Serbian. In his words, I'm drooling watching Djokovic play. How he hits the ball, it's outrageous. When he's mentally well, it's a barbarity. How he manages the timing and how he handles the hot moments of the game is unique. For me, he's the best ever. Well, as one of Novak's biggest admirers myself, I can confirm that just watching him out on court is one of the greatest feelings we can have as tennis fans. We also need to mention Martina Navratilova because she's also had problems with Novak in the past, but has since warmed up to him. The Czech-born American, who spent 332 weeks on top of the women's ranking and won 18 single slams, once suggested that Djokovic didn't have many fans outside Serbia and also had an issue with his decision to avoid taking the jab last year. But after his 24th Grand Slam title at the US Open this year, Navratilova suggested that Djokovic's attention to detail on and off the court was the key to his enduring success. In her words, he's the consummate professional, always has been, and has the talent that goes with it. All the ingredients are there and the technology, Navratilova told Sky Sport. He surrounds himself with people that know what he's doing and he keeps thriving to get better. That's what I really admire about him the most. He still wants to get better. This won't be his last major. He has a few more left in him. 
Those were some kind words from Navratilova, and it just goes to show that you can't deny greatness, which is something Tim Henman understands too. Former British number one Tim Henman believes Djokovic is the complete player, as he has a better knowledge of the game than all of his rivals. According to Henman, he understands all aspects of his game and preparation. When you break down the match tactics, so many elements are so impressive. Henman also told Sky Sports that he was impressed with how the Serbian's game had evolved. According to him, that serve and volley coming to the net so many times, that's someone who has evolved his game. He wasn't comfortable at the net before, there were question marks about his serve six years ago. We talk about his 24th Grand Slam, and you just don't feel like it's going to be his last. The hunger is there, the desire, and fitness. Well said. So, what do you guys think about the comments from these tennis legends? I'll tell you something. Djokovic has now won 12 majors in his 30s and has a 12-3 record in Grand Slam finals since turning 30. Winning three out of four Grand Slams and making it to the final at Wimbledon, two Masters 1000 titles, the ATP Finals title, the year-end number one trophy, and all the other achievements make 2023 one of the best seasons for Nole. And the truth is that he is the best we've ever seen. Sorry, Roger and Rafa fans. I like both players, and I'm not trying to be biased or anything. I'm working with facts and stats, not feelings. We might never truly understand the gravity of Novak's accomplishments until we can actually look back retrospectively when he retires. From chasing records, to setting them, to surpassing his own records, it all comes down to this. Novak Djokovic has done what nobody in the history of the sport has been able to do, and for that, he deserves the utmost praise from everyone who truly understands what the game is all about. Well, some players did some trash talking and disrespected the GOAT. Here's what happened to them.